In this video, I traveled to Wakatahachie Wetlands in beautiful South Florida with my D850 in tow in search of some nesting great blue herons. And as usual, I find a whole lot more. There's alligators, iguanas, turtles, kingfishers, purple gallinules, all kinds of crazy stuff. And I get to use a Nikon 500 millimeter F4 prime lens. Come on, let's go check it out. It's 6.30. And this is where I am, Wakatahachie Wetlands. And it's just now opening. I'm the fourth car in line, and there's one behind me. Let's go see what's here. Wakatahachie has this really nice elevated boardwalk that weaves its way through several small islands of trees. This gives you an excellent vantage point on the world below, and it provides you with some protection from these beasts. This is the American alligator. This clip was shot using the D850's slow motion feature. This feature has turned out to be one of my favorites. This alligator was about 8 feet in length or just under 3 meters. My friend Jack told me there was another alligator living here that could eat this one for lunch. The locals have nicknamed this other big alligator, George. There's just so much to take in at Wakatahachie Wetlands that sometimes it can be visually overwhelming. I wanted to take advantage of the sunrise and the cool reflections on the surface of the water, so I used my 20mm Nikon lens to grab this shot. This is an excellent example of what a sunrise looks like at Wakatahachie Wetlands. And to make this picture a little more authentic Florida, I asked the alligator if it would swim right through my shot. You can see it down in the bottom left corner. Here are the settings I used to get this shot, and the image has been processed in Lightroom to tame the highlights in the sky and bump the shadows in the water. The exposure compensation value shouldn't have had any effect on this image because I was shooting in full manual mode with auto ISO disabled. I wanted to shoot at an ISO of 64 to take full advantage of the dynamic range on the D850. The first two islands were overloaded with white ibis, and they didn't want to stick around to get their pictures taken. That's okay, because there are plenty of other great photo opportunities with practically every step. My first bird photograph of the day would wind up being a bird I've been trying to photograph for a very long time. Check out this incredible prehistoric looking pileated woodpecker. In this first image, the pileated woodpecker was busy hammering this pine tree with its beak. I patiently waited for the bird to come out of cover and my patience paid off big time. Look at this amazing bird. This is the largest woodpecker in North America. How large? These woodpeckers can grow up to 18 inches in height, or 45 centimeters, and their wingspans can be up to 29 inches, or 73 centimeters. This is one large woodpecker, and the D850 captured some incredible detail. This series was shot handheld using my Nikkor 200-500 lens. My friend Jack was nice enough to let me use his 500 millimeter f4 lens on the D850, and of course, I'm not going to pass up that opportunity. And that lens on the D850 is just absolutely incredible. I'm spoiled forever. And if anybody wants to send me a 500 millimeter F4, just say so in the comments below and I'll give you my address. Seriously. My first shot with the 500 millimeter F4 was of this beautiful tricolored heron. My friend Jack was also nice enough to let me use his tripod and his gimbal. And yes, that spoiled me too. Next up was this little green heron with a nice neck stretch. These birds usually look much smaller because they are all scrunched up. This image gives you a good idea of how tall they really are. And I really like the different colors on the wing feathers. Then I grabbed this shot of this massive iguana that wasn't too far from the boardwalk. By the way, this image is a JPG straight out of the camera. The D850 produces the best JPEG files I have ever seen. They are highly detailed and super clean looking and sometimes they rival the raw files. It was great to capture some creatures who weren't moving around too much, but I really wanted to see how the 500F4 and the D850 tracked fast movement, and wouldn't you know it, directly behind me about 100 feet or 33 meters away, a pair of kingfishers decided to fight. Tracking these little birds is always a challenge. Here's the first kingfisher shot at full resolution. This will give you a better idea of how far away they were. Let's crop in and see what things look like. There, that's much better. This fight happened so fast that I didn't even have time to think or make any adjustments to the camera. I could have gone for a wider aperture of like maybe f5.6 
because these birds were so far away. That would have given me more light to increase the shutter speed and possibly lower the ISO as well, but I'm very happy with these images. The D850 has no problems tracking fast movement. The first iguana I photographed wasn't the only large iguana at Wakatahachi. I saw two more giant males like this one who was asserting his dominance over the smaller green iguana in the tree branches below. The larger iguana didn't want the smaller one anywhere near him. And let me tell you something, these iguanas are huge. This one was pushing six feet or two meters. I shot this clip in slow motion on the D850. Let's capture some images of this beast. That huge iguana finally settled into his tree and man is that lizard massive. I couldn't even get the entire tail in the frame. Look at all that orange color too. His size, color, and those huge jowls are a definite sign that this is a male iguana. The shape of this iguana's head reminds me of a stormtrooper helmet from the movie Star Wars. Here's a closer look. What do you think? Yep, I definitely see a stormtrooper helmet. There was another big male iguana much closer, and I grabbed this shot for size reference. The bird in the top right is a cormorant, and I think the bird on the bottom right is an anhinga. Look how big that iguana is. Let's get a closer look. Aw, look, he's taking a nap. Notice how he has positioned his body so his entire side is soaking up all of that warm sun. Being cold-blooded, these iguanas need that warmth to kickstart their metabolism. Have you ever seen the inside of an iguana's mouth? Now you have. This big boy yawned for me and I grabbed a couple of great shots. And in case you're wondering, these lizards are vegetarians. That's right, they only eat plants. And as luck would have it, a purple gallinule emerged from the vegetation right behind me, and I'll never pass up an opportunity to take shots of one of these beautiful birds. At first, the purple gallinule was shy. It stayed hidden in the vegetation, but then the temptation of eating brought it right out in the open so we could see just how beautiful this bird really is, and wow, what an incredible looking bird. I kept the settings the same for this series of shots, so I'm only going to overlay them on this first couple of images. It was extremely difficult choosing which shots to share in the video, but choosing my favorite from this series was easy. It's this shot. The way this beautiful bird is longingly looking back at those little purple flowers makes the shot for me, because those flowers are the gallinule's breakfast. Check out how this bird uses those huge chicken-looking feet to gingerly climb down to those flowers for a tasty breakfast and success. Who knew such a beautiful bird would eat beautiful flowers? How cool is that? Time to check on those nesting great blue herons. I watched this one pull a branch from the bottom of the pond and then decide it just wasn't good enough for nesting material, so it was back to the nesting site, and I managed to grab a really cool series of images as the bird flew in. Being able to freeze time like this really makes for some very interesting shots. It also gives you a very nice look at all those cool looking wing feathers. This landing series happened in about two seconds, if that. I quickly switched to video mode just in time to catch this cool courtship display in slow motion. The slow motion feature of the D850 helped me capture a really cool moment as these two great blue herons did a little dance. The little tufts of feathers floating through the air just add to the moment. And then I got my favorite shot of this pair as they settled down into their nesting site. Check out that incredible plumage of spiky looking feathers. I managed to get some really cool shots of this cormorant fishing. I really like all of the water drops in this series, and then the one where he actually caught this little fish. And then I managed to grab two awesome shots of the cormorant taking off. Look how close the bird's wings are to the surface of the water. And finally, we have liftoff. And as it turns out, the great blue herons weren't the only birds nesting at Wakadahatchee that morning. There were also a few cormorant nests worth checking out. In this first shot, you can see a tiny little baby cormorant looking up at one of the adults. And in this last shot, you get to see a fairly large chick sticking its head down the adult's throat in search of breakfast. Yum. The trip to Wakadahatchee wouldn't be complete without stopping at another area really close by called Green K Wetlands. Because at Green K, there are little teeny painted buntings and I always like checking them out. So I figured I'd go over there and see if I can find them. The little painted buntings are easy to find, but difficult to photograph because they like to stay deep in cover where there is practically no light at all. 
I had to lower my shutter speed in order to get enough light into the camera for these colorful little birds. I managed these two shots before deciding to go see what else I could find at Green K. I found this tricolored heron silently standing among the reeds. I love the contrast between the bird and the vegetation around it. It helps the image tell more of a story as this bird stalked its prey like a lion on the plains of an African savanna. On the other side of the boardwalk, I found this beautiful monarch butterfly clinging to an incredible looking purple flower. I grabbed this shot just as a bee was trying to photobomb the image. And by the way, this is a JPEG straight out of the camera. Look at that color and detail. How about a nice turtle pile up? I can count six turtles lazily soaking up some sun on this old palm tree. Here's another view of the same group from a different perspective. I really like the reflections here. And this was my surprise shot of the day. I zoomed in to get a better look at this turtle and grabbed a shot. I had no idea there was a tiny orange dragonfly sitting on the turtle's nose. Just another great example of the power and magic of photography. Thanks for coming along on this adventure. I had a great time. Jack, thanks for letting me use that lens. It was a real treat. To the couple of guys I saw there at Wakadahatchee Wetlands and everyone else, thanks for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. Click the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, leave a comment. I'd love to know what you thought of the video. See ya.